Good evening. I'm Cynthia. I'm here with Doug, and we'll help you make money in the stock market with information you will not find anywhere else because we are Wall Street Media. And today, Doug, before you start, <laughs> we are starting with the FBR um, Markets 12th Annual Spring Investor Conference. You can follow it at www dot wsw dot com slash webcast slash fbr twenty one. Well, thank you very much. I just wanted to thank you for coming in for a third set here. What a day! <laughs> you have lunch with Oracle. You come in. You look. I think you discovered new vitamins. And here we are. We've got three CEO videos. Sure. This is about as good as it gets for me and German Mike. I mean, we're living. We're living high on the hog here. Bella came along as well. And and Bella. Um. They're probably like, who the hell is Bella? Yeah. Like, who the heck is Bella? <laughs> Everybody knows Bella. Bella's a dog. It's like Paris Hilton. Everybody knows. Right. Who's the one that Let me tell her? you the difference between me and Paris Hilton. <laughs> I had. <laughs> we may have the same agency, but I had my guest campaign before her, and I have I had three of them. And you I had, had my dog. Oracle. I had my dog. Six months before she had her dog, I was on I a photo there shoot. Was actually, an Urkel. Okay, I was on a photo shoot <laughs> with Paris for Interview Magazine six years ago, and Paris told Paris saw Bella, and she's like, "Oh, I got to get a dog too," and she went and got a Chihuahua. She and copied I have a you. I swear, this is exactly what happened. I even have the shoot that we did together, Interview Magazine, yeah, looks almost great. six years ago. I had my dog before Paris. Okay. Bella was born before Paris's before Tinkerbell. She copied me. <laughs> okay, now that we have that cleared now, up. And I had my guest campaign before her, and I had three of them. Hey, guest has been big since the 70s. All right, well, <laughs> enough of that. Let's get on to the FBR 21. Okay. First, we're going to start off with a video from Kevin Bucci. Uh, I like these three, by the way. Three what? These three companies coming up. I cheated. Oh. I looked ahead. Doug, I write down these notes so that they can be typed into a computer, not for you to look at. I watch the videos. These are my notes, though. I All write right, well, I won't cheat. You go ahead and do your notes. Okay. Tell people who they're getting. Kevin Bucci, CFO of Cephalon, or ticker CEPH, talks about the oncology franchise and in particular about Trinata, a newly approached for chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia. And, again, we're going to see the video. It has the talks. Kevin Bucci. We focus on three main areas today, which I think will be probably of most interest to you. I'd like to focus on the oncology franchise, uh, it started several years ago in the United States with the acquisition of Trisonox. Uh, in, the, in Europe, it was with the acquisition of Targretin, Myoset, and Abelset, and a commercial presence in 18 countries in Europe. But I think the most recent excitement in the area is around Trianda. Uh, it was a product which was introduced at the recent ASH uh, meeting in 2007 with a very large banner, and I'm also told I didn't go to the conference, people with balloons hanging off them running around the conference. It was quite an event. And it was recently approved by the FDA for the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia. This was based upon a study which was conducted in Europe. And you can see the overall responses in that study uh, in, on this slide. Uh, overall response rate, it was a study run against chlorambucil, uh, which is a, the approved medication for the treatment of CLL in the United States. So an overall response rate of 59% versus 26%. And probably most importantly, uh, progression-free survival increased from six months on the chlorambucil arm to 18 months on the bendamustine triander arm. Uh, the product got an expedited review at the FDA, priority review, and was approved March 20th, and we launched it April 1st. There is additional data um, that's been generated on Trianda and that is being generated with Trianda. Um, also at ASH, there was a study presented uh, in refractory indolent non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, this study was the subject of a special protocol assessment by the FDA, and you can see the SPA target here was a 60% overall response rate. We generated a 75% response rate in the study. And the target for median duration of response overall was six months. We generated 9.2 months in the study. Uh, this was filed with the FDA. We've got a PDUPA action date of October 31st, 2008. Um, and then finally, the other piece of information which came out at, at ASH was a study which is being run by a German cooperative group called Stiel, this was in first-line indolent non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, they ran quite a large study and presented interim results from the first 315 patients looking at R plus CHOP. CHOP is a four-chemotherapy regimen, which is widely used in the treatment of NHL, comparing it against R, R is rituxan, I'm sorry, bendamustine or trianda. 
And what they were trying to show was non-inferiority, hopefully with a better side effect profile. The theory being that if you could take four relatively toxic chemotherapeutics and replace them with one, Trianda, you might get a result which is much more favorable to the patient. Uh, what they saw in the study was overall response rates, very comparable. Uh, slight increase in the complete response rate on the bendamustine arm. It was a, uh, uh, statistically it was better, but there was no, no statistical significance associated with it. This is a good company. Okay, so this is Cephalon Incorporated, ticker CEPH. I, I like these guys. They were down a little bit today, which is odd, right? They've gotten a, a lot of stuff approved recently. Got fast track approval, cancer drugs, leukemia drugs. Good stuff, man. And uh, we've got to hurry so we can get the next two ones in. I, I, I'm going to end up buying one of these three at least. Okay, cool. Well, then let I bought the one from earlier All right, today. let me hurry. If I hear one more about that Cinta, <laughs> die. <laughs> John A. Bardis, CEO of Med Assets, or ticker MDAS, talked about the three categories of spend management, commodities, medical devices, and capital equipment. Um, Let's take a look at it. I actually like on this, this earlier today. Yeah, I know, but I like this We have this the video, video clip. Okay. Here's a video clip of John A. Bardis. Let's talk a little bit about the spend side of our business. We're going to break it apart into the spend side and the revenue cycle side and then bring it back together just for ease of communication. Our sales team is out there selling the combined solution like I just talked about. So don't think just because of the ease of communication that we choose here that we sell these independently. They are sold independently. The vast majority of the time they're sold in connection with one another. So what we do on the spend side is we help a hospital CFO or hospital reduce the usage or reduce the price of everything that's tangible. So the big thing that we do not help with is the labor equation today. So if it's a commodity, a pharmaceutical, a lab device, a medical device, capital equipment, we have a solution for it. We break it into the three categories of commodity, med tech, and CapEx because the nature of the competitive environment dictates what business models deploy to achieve savings for hospitals. You'll hear me say that over and over again, and anybody in our company for that matter, over and over again, because what we are here to do is help hospitals save money. When we do that, our business, our growth, our economics solve for themselves in the long run. So we stay focused on the customer first. On the commodity side, this is where we deploy our group purchasing model. You have to have three conditions in the marketplace where the group purchasing model works well. You have to have you know, repetitive purchases, deep competition, and importantly, very little, if any, clinical preference from either the nursing staff or the physicians. We have you know, a contracting staff in St. Louis. We have 1,200 GPO contracts with eight or 900 vendors. We have to be able to move market share from our office in St. Louis by writing a new contract to have pricing advantage or pricing power over the vendor community. If there's physician preference at the local level in our hospitals that gets in the way of that market share shift, you don't have control of pricing in a, in a national group purchasing organization. And so that's where we relegate to the commodities, which is med surge, pharmaceuticals, laboratory, uh, uh, food, dietary, et cetera. It's very complex. Again, 4 million SKUs. Um, we deploy a lot of technology to help hospitals get to the price. When you think about, you know, over 100 million price points that are in the marketplace just in our contract portfolio based on if it's a, you're, you have market share in a particular therapeutic class of pharmaceuticals in your hospital, then your health system, and then maybe, or your regional system, then the health system. It's an extraordinarily com, you know, complex pricing algorithm. And so our technology helps hospitals optimize inside the product portfolio, which over the competition, we're the third largest GPO, Premier Innovation, we can routinely save two to 400 basis points just on commodities, although the contract price between Premier Innovation and Met Assets is the same. It's getting to the price. It's the delivered price that hospitals actually pay, and it's our technology that helps do that. I like these that, guys. They just came out. And that was John A. Bardis. And you got what MDS? So MDAS, Med Ass, that's incorporated. Tell us. But they just came public this year, right? I can't tell. Uh, Yahoo Finance is broken as usual, or their charts are. Um, but it looks like late December, early January, right? Um, and they've been up and down. Uh, I, I like this. I got to think that in these times uh, of high medical costs, right? Anybody that walks in and says, we can help you on all your tangible assets, manage the costs, and show you a quick savings, that's got to be the easiest sale in the world, right? Absolutely. Let's go on to the next one. So we have Richard Matros, CEO of Sun Healthcare Group, SUNH, ticker discusses the rehab recovery suite and the 190 skilled nursing centers, 15 assisted and independent living centers, and eight mental centers in 25 states with 24,002 licensed beds it operates. 
Please, Mike. <laughs> roll the clip. Hit me one more time. We're going to spend a little bit of time talking about our rehab recovery suites. There are a few of the larger players that do this kind of thing. Skill does it. They call them express recovery suites. Um, I think Genesis does. I don't know if Kindred does um, or not um, because I haven't talked about it that much. But these are separate and distinct units within our nursing centers. And essentially, we'll take um, a 30-bed unit. We'll convert it to 21 beds. They're very home-like um, uh, very upscale kinds of units, and, and the idea is that while we've been taking care of high-end, high-acuity Medicare patients all along, we're trying to attract even a higher-acuity patient, a shorter-term patient, and a younger patient, and these are individuals that don't want to be in nursing centers. Um, so the idea is if you have a physical plant that will accommodate it, you'll have a separate entrance so they don't have to go through the nursing home. If you don't have a separate entrance, that as soon as you walk into the lobby of the nursing center, you go directly to the left or directly to the right, and you walk into the rehab recovery unit. You don't have to walk around the facility. They can take their meals in their rooms. They typically have a separate rehab area. They're private and semi-private only. No, um, no three-bed rooms, flat screens on the walls, really nice furniture, wireless keyboard uh, for internet access at bedside. We have concierge services. So it's really a nice setup for the short period of time um, that they stay in the facilities. And, and we've got 38 of these units now. The capital investment is pretty modest, about 15000 a bed. Um, we have from, we'll go from 38 units to about 50 um, by year end, but we have another 13 identified, um, so 63, and we've already started planning uh, to open those in 2009, although the 2009 number should be beyond 63 by the time we do more analysis over the course of this, over the course of this year. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm waiting for an apology from Doug. You guys have any idea what I go through to bring this show to you? Where's my you apology? You would send me cases of beer, where's my and apology? Ten pizzas and chocolate, and so you just care about. Uh, you hit me twice so far today. I am today. gonna be the bigger person because I care about you. <laughs> you hit me twice. I'm not speaking to him. <laughs> okay. So that was well, that. Tell where they can find more of this nice stuff. So let me tell you where you can find more of this nice stuff, and not because he said it, but because I want to say it. <laughs> that was from the FBR conference, which we're going to have some more in, in a moment. No. You can find us at www.wsw.com slash webcast. That's FBR21. Now, if you want to follow the shows, which we hope you do, and join us every day, you can go to www.wsmco.com. Also, don't forget to look below and click on the feedback. We would love to hear from you. If you own any of the companies that we talk about, please let us know. Tell us what you think about them. Again, we'll see you soon. Say goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Cynthia.